So today, we're going back to basics. That was fun. What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? Me. Yeah, what are you doing? Foam rolling. You never foam roll. What? I always use my foam roller. I'm a big advocate of daily foam rolling to make sure that your muscles are nice and foam rolled. Okay, my hamstrings might be a little bit sore, so I'm foam rolling. What they saw from Philly? <sighs> I did a Pilates class on Thursday morning and I'll admit it. I thought that because grannies do Pilates and slightly older people, I maybe thought that Pilates was easy. Turns out all those people are just seriously strong because Pilates is no joke, okay? And I found that out the hard way. <sighs> so what are we doing today? We are running! Well, obviously that's what the channel's about. Really fast for well, 12 and a half laps in Watford. We used to be pretty frequent visitors of this track. Watford's back. Watford! Watford! It was, if you like, our kind of local PB track when we lived down south. It's the second British Milers Club Grand Prix today, which is a meet that has entry standards on it. All of the races are paced and seeded. So it's a really good kind of best of British race to enter for the middle distances and long distances because it's normally a good opportunity to get a PB. And fingers crossed, the wind dies down and we'll have a good time. I'm not necessarily going for a PB today. I've made a real effort to not fixate on time or a time outcome for this race because I think that has hindered my enjoyment of racing recently. So today, we're going back to basics and we're gonna go out there and have fun. Go party, go boogie, go dance on a trek. Just have a really good time because that is ultimately why I do this. I think I've maybe forgotten that recently. Not completely, but a little bit. So yeah, I'm just gonna go out there, race it, have fun, wear my new Runzy, which you'll get to see later. We should we should tag the person that told me that I was more concerned with fashion than racing. News flash, you can do both. Ooh. And I suppose the only downside of now living in Tunnel, the only downside is that it's gonna take three and a half, four hours to drive down to Watford, which is a little bit long, but we are gonna take our time. It's not gonna be stressful, oh no, because we have left a lot of time and we're not rushing before a race. This feels weird. You gotta admit, right? Yeah. We're super prepared, but I'm gonna take that as a good omen. Should we hit the road? Yeah, but you also, the other bad thing about the North is the rain. Mm, I don't compute. I think the rain feeds the flowers and the flowers enjoy the rain. I think you are just complaining. It's sunny. What are you moaning about? Yeah, for like two seconds. It, one, two, three. Shanyax! <laughs> what, what do we need for a trip like this? What's in the basket? In the bag. What you love to know? Overday oats, because I'm hoping my stomach agrees with this a little bit more than, well, it's just gonna line my stomach basically. Breakfast! And then we have water, 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 protein, water, ice lollies? We needed something to act as like ice bricks. That's smart. Water and Daniel's Primes. Thanks for gifting this to us, Prime. Ridiculous. And then there's also protein, magnesium plus. Sweets. And that's it. Gels. Gonna put some spadanas in there and some bars. And then that's the snack fest. Stop number one. Stop number one. Where are we? I don't actually know. In the middle of nowhere, I think. We are two hours and 13 minutes away. We have been driving for approximately one hour and two minutes and we're stopping every hour to stretch the legs and empty the bladder. We'll rate all the stops Let's and see, yeah, how good they are. And then if anyone watching is passing through um, Ashbourne, in the Peak District. Are we in the Peak District still? Are we out of the Peak District? Uh, just outside the Peak District, where there is an Aldi and a travel lodge. Stay tuned for some riveting car break. Mm. 
content. I got a sandwich and a latte. I'm saving my overnight oats for just before the race. Wait, let's go. Well, there's plenty of choice for food. So that potentially brings the mark up. And it's not overpriced food, like at the M&S Waitrose Moto kind of stops you get. However, one toilet, okay, it's a small supermarket. Toilet paper was present, but none of it was on the roll. It was just everywhere. So you kind of have to salvage, it's clearly clean. Someone's just gone, oh, I'm just gonna take all the toilet roll off and leave it on the toilet. And it's melt a bit in there. And there was no like extracurricular stuff to look at. Like I like being able to look at the cuddly toys and the fruit machines. What, in you the know? toilet? No, just in the motorway <laughs> service station stop that you can just look at and be like, I'm not gonna get one of those, but it's nice to look at. So for that reason, I'm giving it a three out oh. of 10. Wow. Yeah, pretty harsh. Brutal. Yeah. number two I put a question thing on my story being like race day ask me some questions and I'll answer someone's asked me are you a nervous chatty person or a nervous silent person can anyone guess come on what do you think that's just weird <laughs> stop number two time to dispatch some more urine into the toilet system <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely not a silent nervous person a mum go pee and we have an hour and three minutes left of our journey and we are apparently gonna get there 40 minutes early than our preferred arrival time. So we could spend 40 minutes at this exquisite establishment, the road chef on, what motorway are we on? M1. The M1, oh yeah. Flipper tea. It's, it's name, it's, it's birthday in 12 days. And imagine if it doesn't get bought by then. It's going to be so sad. His birthday will be spent in a service station. Can we save it? No. Found a present for you. We've been waiting for something that almost has your name on it for ages. I would give it a 5.5 out of 10. Food outlets were limited, even though we didn't need food. The toilets were pretty pretty stinky. However, there's this kind of outside seating area, which kind of brings the, the score up a little bit. But it was really confusing to get in here, wasn't it? Because it tried to take us to petrol and you had to kind of do yeah. a UE on yourself and come in here. And car park is confusing. Downgrade for that. Yeah, 5.5. What would your parting words of wisdom be? <laughs> My passing words of wisdom? <laughs> yeah. Do left foot, right foot as fast as you can. Okay, I think. For 5,000 meters. <laughs> okay, I think I can do that. There you go. That's, that's my uh, passing words of wisdom. We can't let the vlog know the true secrets. Yeah. Or you know, like the true, you know, the true words of wisdom, right? We gotta, we gotta gatekeep that stuff. That's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> And if you don't already, you should be subscribed to Elo Jarl's YouTube channel. Not least because he's a very fast runner, but I also hear he has a pretty good editor as well. He's the editor. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Elliot! Come nice. on, keep going, keep going, keep going. Beautiful. Nice.
early in the evening. It's very difficult to run. I feel like I need a wee, but I'm sure I don't. I've been like three times. Yeah, you don't. Go have some fun. Love the grind. Love the grind, baby. Love the grind. Go, Billy! Well, that went well. Yeah. Yeah? I'd say so. How did it feel? I mean, I feel like the first lap I was asleep because <laughs> I was quite far back and I had to go around quite a big group of people about a lap in, which is fine. Like I'd rather do that than go off too hard. And then I just kind of settled. I sat myself behind, I think Alex, Innes and Ellie had gone. And then it was like, Hannah Irwin, Sarah Aston, and me. And I was like, this is a good group. I'm going to sit here. And I probably sat behind them for about three laps. And I was like, kind of th thought back to Highgate when I was leading those three girls or the group of three of us. And I, I just thought, if I just sit here and make Hannah do all the work, we're going to slow down and it's not really fair. So I pulled around her. And as I did, I sort of turned and said to her, come on, let's work together. She spoke to me afterwards and she was like, I think we actually picked it up when you did that, which we probably did. And then I caught up a girl called Tia, who we kind Kind of like swap places a few times yeah. and i let her come around me to be honest because i just thought okay she's gonna take a lap and, or take a couple of laps and then i'll sit behind her and then you know vice versa and then i guess the last time i went around her i just picked it up and then i could see that innis was kind of struggling and dying a little bit in the maybe the fourth k she'd gone out really hard and i mean hats off to her she you know rolled the dice and had a really gutsy race went past her and found myself in second and then i think that was probably within the last four laps it's a bit of a blur like and then i i know that over the last mile like i just turned the screw and i reminded myself like the fourth k of a 5k is the easiest time to slow down so you really have to focus and just switch on and i just kind of gradually like turned it up and turned it up and picked it up and then i just i didn't think i'd catch alex coming with like a lap to go I thought oh, I'm gonna try and close on her and then I could see that I was getting closer and closer so with 200 to go I was like you've just got to give it everything you got and I went past her with about 120 you take her on the bend yeah because nice. once I got to her I was like 
you've just got to when you go past someone especially when you're going past someone and then you're in the lead to finish the race you have to do it with such conviction and i know she's really fast like she's a 1500 5k runner she's got a really good kick but when you're coming from behind you have such an advantage so i just kind of went for it and that like the 10 meters of me like overtaking her was probably the fastest part of the race and then after that you're just kind of you just look ahead you you know you get taught as you're coming up through the age groups, never turn around. And then I didn't even look at the clock really. It wasn't about that. It was like, well, I've come here and I've won. Uh, ended up running about a 12 second PB, which, you know, happy days. What did you run? 15.32. PB, took the win, had an absolutely amazing time. And that's what I came here to do. Number one, have fun. And then the rest just takes care of itself. So yeah, it's a confidence boost in trusting the way that I race and trusting that going out there to have fun and enjoy myself pays off because if you do that you know you can't be disappointed and what was the may i mean i know you said you it was about having fun but what was the major shift between last week where you had that kind of funk two weeks ago rather and then this one what was the mentality change what did you do differently i, I think like going into the 1500 i had like a time in mind and i wanted to run a pb and i wanted it to be 4 18 or faster like i wanted to be in the teens and today i was like if i run 15 52 but i have fun and I am proud of the way I raced, fine. Like, well, it's not about the time. And I committed to like the racing craft today. I just felt really confident out there. It was honestly so much fun. I wish I could go do it again. Yeah. You've got another race coming up. Yeah. 3K on Wednesday. Got to recover. Need to go home and go to sleep. Sounds good. Let's do it. First. But first. PB McDonald's. Can't wait for the McDonald's police to come at me in the comments. Love the grind. Thank you.